Okay, let's find the oxidation state of copper. Now I consider this a difficult problem. Uh, here's how you do it. You just go piece by piece and figure out what you know already. For example, what's the charge on water? Zero. Yeah, it's zero. What's the charge on the hydroxide? Negative one. Negative one. That's one of your polyatomics. Cyanide. Negative one. Negative one. Also one of your polyatomics. How about potassium? Plus one. Plus one. That's in the first column of the periodic table, which are all plus ones. Okay, now let's set up a, a little bit of an equation, okay? Uh, the overall charge is zero, because nothing's written. Zero for the overall charge equals, there's going to be two uh, Ks plus everything that's in brackets. I'll put a big parenthesis for the brackets. There's going to be a copper, which is the one we want to know. There's going to be two of the waters. There's going to be two of the hydroxides. And there's going to be two of the cyanides. Okay, so that's my equation. Now let's plug in all the numbers because we know everything but copper. Zero equals two uh, plus ones, so two times one, plus open parentheses. Uh, we don't know copper. Uh, water is two times zero. Uh, hydroxide is two times minus one. And then cyanide is two times minus one. So I just solved. Zero is equal to two plus copper plus, uh, really, minus two minus two. So copper is going to equal what? Plus two. Copper equals plus two. There's your answer. Is that what we expect? Yeah. Oh, that's the Kuprick ion. So if you, long as you didn't freak out when you saw this and you put in the numbers that you know, in this case for ions and polyatomics, you're set.